What if you could help others to find the power to heal themselves, physically, emotionally, and spiritually? When I started teaching my classes, it was in 2002, and I was just doing the past life regressions and contacting the subconscious part. But then as the time went on and we found how powerful this was and what we could do with it, a lot of the students began saying, you know, advanced past life regression doesn't really tell what it's all about. This is so much more than that. We think you should change the name. So it was a few years ago, we decided to change the name to Quantum Healing Hypnosis Technique. And this is the healing technique that we've now been teaching it, well, since 2002, that's 12 years. What if you could time travel with them? Visit mythical places or angelic realms, other worlds, other galaxies. Help others to speak to their higher selves. You can. Dolores has taught thousands of people from across the world how to use QHHT and now you can learn her method by going directly to DoloresCannon.com and don't forget to mention the discount code MORETALKS. Have you ever wondered, can you communicate directly with spirit guides, teachers, or non-physical consciousness, or even our higher selves? What would they tell us? My name is Kevin Moore, and since 2015, I started to practice a form of communication which is termed channeling. I have been interviewing experts on my talk show to find out, does life continue after we die? And can we communicate with those that have crossed over? With each expert I spoke to, they all had different ideas. Is there knowledge from the past which could be shared with the present moment? So I thought, why not just speak to the non-physical world directly through channelers around the world? And that's what I set out to do. They call us channelers will take the viewers on a journey into the phenomena known as channeling. And my main goal with this docu-series is to bring a new understanding and awareness to channeling by looking within ourselves and asking, is it truly possible that we can all use this innate ability? I'm Gary Bodley, and I'm a channel. I channel Joshua. I'm based in North Carolina near Charlotte. I've been channel for nine years now. I've written five books. Joshua's written five books through me. And we have a great podcast called Joshua Live. And there's a lot of fun stuff going on. Yes, and we're going to get into the books as well because there is a, I mean, there's no way I can do this justice right now because there's just so much great information as well. There's a lot on your website. Your website, Gary, is? is the teachings of Joshua.com. Okay. And on there, there's, um, God, there's so much. You've got your own podcast. You've got all the books. You've got some free stuff. You've got the courses and um, much, much more as well. So there's a lot that people can get from that. We'll link everything in the description below for this video. So just going into a bit of your background to begin with, because I always find it fascinating how people end up on this journey. I guess sometimes you, to yourself, you think, how did this ha even happen? I, I, I could never have imagined, you know, what I'm doing right now. But um, th there's a few significant events, I think, in your life as well. Now, you've always been someone that's, well, been into business, been into um, investments, I guess. Um, if we go back uh, a number of years right now, let's go back to the first time that you found yourself, what you thought was success, and then comes along a car crash and it changed everything for you. Yeah, well, I was in college then and doing very well and had my own business as well as working as a waiter at night and paying myself through college in the 80s. And the business I was in with my 
best friend Bruce, we were just starting with computers and developing databases for real estate companies. And we're just two young guys doing this, and it was pretty leading edge. But I didn't like doing it, and I didn't have a lot of time. And lo and behold, I had bought this new car that was too expensive and the gas guzzler. And and I ended up getting T-boned, but I don't even remember it or anything about that. And that obviously led me to not having the business anymore because I couldn't have a car and couldn't get, get to work, that sort of thing. It just folded and not being able to really work as a waiter. So really living mouth to mouth there. Uh, and that started a whole chain of events as well. But my whole f- you know, focus was on success and finishing college and going into the business world and doing real estate and things like that. It was, it was leading me towards this, but I could never have seen it at the time. No, absolutely. And even if you go back a bit further, and you've probably always had this gift where you just you could just tell who someone was. You could just, you saw that, that the best in that person, you still do as well in the work that you do now. Yes, and this was a, one of my empathic abilities that I realized that I've always had, and I thought everyone else had it as well. So I was born in South Africa, and our family traveled a lot. I never stayed in the same school more than a year, so back then I'd make friends very easily. I knew who they were. We became very, very close, and then I was gone. Met new friends, did the same thing over and over again. We moved around. I was never in the same school more than one year ever, all over the the country, back to South Africa, back here. And it wasn't until high school that I stayed all four years. Gosh, that time in South Africa must have been um, an eye-opener, especially at that time as well. Yeah, when, when I went back... We moved when I was two, so I don't remember anything back then, but we went back in the early 70s when I was about 10. I remember going into a store with my mother, just a little dress shop, and these two black ladies came in, and the owner just got up and said, you can't be in here, and we I couldn't understand why that was, and uh, then my mom had to explain the whole apartheid thing, but it was it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, it, it, well, not just that. I mean, just the worldly experience as well. Um, it, it changes you in some respects. I think it does. Yeah. Well, we traveled a lot and we went all over the world. So that, just living there was great. But we also you know, went all over Europe and America and, and the Caribbean and Hawaii and things like that. And I really got to see other cultures and, and had a different impression of the world than other kids did. Yes. At, at school. Yes, absolutely. And then if we sort of shoot to the 40s, um, which wasn't that long ago, right? Um, then you were married. Um, you, you had a successful investment sort of business. I think it was in real estate as well. Yes, I had a huge real estate business. I had all the different facets. Plus, I was developing uh, subdivisions and it all collapsed in 2008. Um, lost our house, lost the house we were building, lost all the investment properties, lost the development, lost my office building, all to foreclosure, and had to start over again. And and we ended up renting a house from friends of ours. And this house just happened to be on the end of the Loxahatchee River in a nature preserve, the last house. You couldn't see anything but nature. It was actually spectacular, but we, we had to figure it all out again. And a friend of ours brought over the secret and oh, we yeah. just got yeah. so into the secret. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I said back then, I'm going to use this law of attraction stuff to get my money back. And, and so we listened to the secret like 10 times. And then in our own library, we found Ask and Is Given by Abraham Hicks. So we listened to that 10 times. Then we went to a workshop in Asheville. There was a two-day workshop. And there I started my passion and, and my wife soon after started her passion, and we were just off doing our own thing, having a really good time. It was funny because when I lost everything, I looked back on it, and I could have made one decision that would have kept the whole thing. But somehow, that choice was not available to me. And I'll explain more about why that was. But in that, there was some sense of relief, which I always thought was funny. You know, I was successful from the outside, but I was unsatisfied completely, and so were all my friends who were successful. And we would sit around and say, Where's the satisfaction in all this? Why all this effort and struggle to get make all this money and have all these things where that didn't bring any satisfaction whatsoever? You could have people look at you and say, well, this is what I want, but we were there and we couldn't figure out what to do. And so a lot of my friends were having 
divorces and DUIs and lawsuits and all kinds of issues, health issues. And uh, so, you know, in hindsight, of course, that loss of everything had to happen and was the best thing that ever happened. Right, absolutely. And you just mentioned there that there was one choice that you could have uh, made that would have kept it all. What, what was that choice? There was this one property that I bought. And if I had not bought that property at that time, I would have had enough money to cover everything else during the two years that was down. When yeah. you've looked back at that decision, did you know that was the wrong decision deep down at the time? Uh, it was one of reflect. those decisions where you were asking yourself, is this an ego-based decision because it was sort of a prized property? Or is it a financially sound decision? And you know, back then, everything was a winner. You couldn't lose right. in real estate. And so, right. <laughs> so I doubted my doubts. Yeah. yeah. No, I remember being over here in the claps and I was visiting friends and I remember driving out of Vegas and just seeing, oh my God, just sheer, the sheer numbers of properties that were half built and just, you know, left there just, just, uh, in that state. And it, it was, it was very difficult for so many people then. Yes. But it yeah. was also good for so many people too. Absolutely. Because you reassess what was important. Well, Especially in the times that we live in now, this is where your teachings, uh, the, the teachings come into full effect as well. That you know, no matter what's going on on the outside, we can still live our purpose. We can still be abundant. And coming from that energy affects others. You know, you want to change the world, change yourself. I always say, there's no reason to change the world because it's your world. The only thing you need to do is change your perspective on that. And if you're looking around and seeing the world as if it's going, you know, to to hell in a handbasket, you're going to have a perspective that's quite limited and your choices and options will be limited as well. If you think people need your help because you see them having a hard time, well, unless that's your joy and passion, you're not going to be any help at all. If you ever notice you give someone unsolicited advice, that never works. Right. It's always about understanding your perception of yourself because your perception of yourself is translated into a vibration and that vibration is reflected by the life you're living right absolutely and when you compare the life you've got now i'm guessing you know the idea of going back into real estate well right now there's there's no need to say you couldn't but um it's there's not really the pool there for it i guess well there's not a pool. i mean i was really into businesses of all kinds we had restaurants we had all kinds of things right i would never do anything other than this Right. For any amount of money. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is the most satisfying thing that I could ever imagine doing. Yes, absolutely. There is a, I want I wanted people to go to, uh, to your website to see the documentary that, um, that's been done on you. It's a, it's really well done. And, um, I'm, you'll know the guy's name who, who put this together and everything else in the background to it. But, um, if you just want to talk about that just briefly. Yeah. So we had a retreat in 2018 and, one of the people in our in our boot camp, um, her husband is a film producer. His name's Trevor, and he's he just went and did it. I just thought it would be fun to do, and so it was fantastic. It just turned out that way. Well, it's great, honestly. I'm I'm gonna link it below. I want people to watch that because that that um, some of the basic teachings of um, the Joseph Group um, just come out and shine in that as well. And there's so much to the the information that you've put out there. And it's difficult to know where to start right now, I'll be honest with well, you. I can tell you where to start. Joshua, um, in 2013, they came to me through meditation. There was a bit of back and forth and understanding what this was and getting comfortable with it and thinking I was crazy for a while. And then on uh, November 15, 2013, they said, get up and go right, right, right. So I got up in my office, closed the door, started typing, typed out a bunch of three pages in about half an hour as fast as I could, just the thoughts coming to me. Thought it was a bunch of gobbledygook. But then read it back and just saw what it was. And the, the first sentence is, everything is right. Then it goes on, there is no wrong anywhere in the universe. Anything seen as wrong is seen from a limited perspective, whether that's a perspective <coughs> from, from a higher perspective, whether that's a perspective of non-physical or the perspective over a course of time, everything is always, always right. And an example of this is the meteor that killed the dinosaurs. Well, if it wasn't... You know, that was terrible for them at the time, but if it wasn't for that, it would never have led to what we're living now. So we can do that with every single event. And when we start looking at it from that higher perspective, what that actually does is physically raise your vibration. 
because your vibration is all about your perspective. So when you start to say, you know, things aren't happening to me, they're happening for me, and you start to look and see how these things that you might have called bad in the past were, are actually happening for you, that perspective shift oh, yes. changes everything. It does. And some of these teachings are so simple yet so deep because when you start unpacking it, it just goes further and further down the rabbit hole. There's something about this teaching uh, and these teachings. When I when I came across them, I was like, this is different. Then I, sp I remember us speaking and I got off the phone to, from you and I thought, wow, this, this guy's, there's something different with this. There's a quality to this teaching. And I, I, I really do recommend people to um you know to to look at this stuff because it's it's really good um obviously you, you know there was an influence there from abraham abraham hicks and i guess that was part of the journey to open you up to be comfortable to do the channeling i mean it, it's not the i always say it's, it's it's the fringest thing in the paranormal that the channeling but yet we all have this innate ability all answers lie within don't they a hundred percent as i've done this work for nine years now the one thing that's been clear to me is that channeling is like singing Everyone can sing. Some people are just naturally gifted and some people enjoy it, but everyone can sing happy birthday. And so everyone can channel and whether that's channeling your inner self or some other group, it's, it's basically if, you know, any book that's ever been written was essentially channeled. Any song was essentially channeled. Any work of art was essentially channeled. So this idea of channeling being fringe is, is the opposite of what it is. It's the most normal thing in the world. And, Everyone can develop it. And the, the higher you raise your perspective, what I've seen is through the, say, thousands of people that I've worked with, hundreds have become channelers. Wow. It is, you know, they don't go out in public and do it, but they're all channeling by writing and doing their journals and come and, and saying things like we, you know, in the third, third person. And it is a natural ability. Plus, there's a lot of other empathic abilities, too that come online when you start to see yourself from this higher perspective. Absolutely. And how do you discern what's coming through the group as well? It's a, for me, all I do is get into a state of consciousness, aware, conscious awareness. I set intentions. I, I consciously bring them in. And then there's a point there. It takes me about 30 seconds to do it. And at the end, I just say, when you're ready, make me giggle. That feeling of giggling, you know? And so I get that feeling. I know they're ready. And then, I just, then it just comes out. And, you know, it's like holding on to a thread. I could let it go at any time. If the phone rang, I could answer the phone and go yeah. right back to mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. It's not like I'm being possessed or anything. No. It's, but it's, you know, it's a point of focus. And, and I've been doing it for so long now, it's quite easy to just get in the rhythm of it. And I can last an hour or so doing that. Yes. And, and a lot of these teachings are very based in present moment, in the issues that we, we have being here, so, you know, in this human existence, it's not really going out there, you know, into the, the well, not so much into the nature of reality. I guess, I guess it touches upon it, but it, it's very focused on the, the issues that we have just day to day rather than, you know, is there life out there? Have we been, you know, whatever it may be that sort of takes us away from working on ourselves in a sense. Yes, it's very practical. It's all designed for one thing to move you along on your personal journey of self discovery. And the only way you can really get there is you have to realize that we're living in duality, which means good, bad, right, wrong, better, worse. <clears throat> the, if you, you know, most of, most of uh, channeling teachings are more general. These are very specific. And the thing that you don't see in other channelings is, you know, they're talking about looking at the positive aspects and which is fantastic, of course, but you have to look at what you don't like. You have to look at what you think is wrong or bad. And you have to reassess why you think it's wrong or bad. It's always one thing. It's always some fear. Some fear, some limiting belief that's causing you to take a judgment of something or someone and label them as wrong or bad. You don't like this political party? Well, there's something in there that's a limiting belief that you have that they have some way of controlling you or whatever it is or making life worse. It's a fear that they could cause you harm. Well, that fear is all based in this, in this all-encompassing fear that we all have or that all this core limiting belief that we are not the creators of re our reality, that we're victims. A victim means that someone believes that the outside conditions or people can make them feel anything. The only way you can be, feel bad about anything is because some limiting belief has been triggered by some event. We call that a manifestation event. The manifestation event actually comes to point out this limiting belief. It's there for your benefit, whatever, you could be a car accident. 
that car accident is showing you something about your belief system that's limiting you from becoming who you intended to be. And that's how it gets more specific. Yes. Well, and this is the difference with your work of uh, on law of attraction. It's it's sort of a, an evolution to it. It's an add-on to it. It's, it's almost like a missing piece that we've not um, seen before in some respects. Yeah. Or we're being re-reminded just how important this aspect is of it, maybe. Yes. The missing piece is that, w that we don't see a lot is look at what you think is wrong or bad. Realize that's a limiting belief. And then choose a higher perspective. This higher perspective is really what your choice is because that perspective is a vibration. So if you basically say, I'm the creator of my reality, that's one perspective. And if you think I'm a victim to a malevolent universe out there that's causing me harm, that's a limited perspective. The thoughts, ideas, and possible actions that come to you are based in a vibrational frequency of that perspective. Other thoughts outside of that perspective can't come to you. So when I was having that idea that maybe I shouldn't buy that house or making a different decision, it wasn't available to me back then. Only after the fact, looking back, could I perceive, but I was at a different perspective then. <laughs> Excuse me. In the moment, that thought really was never could never come up. And this is what perspective is all about. Now, this is the new thing. Now... If you want to go even a step further, an even newer thing that was just discovered recently is that the perspective brings in a certain range of thoughts, ideas, and possible actions. You're going to take one of them, and that's going to lead to a probable outcome, not an exact outcome. It's, it's variable based on all the other people and events around you. So all of it, though, is leading you towards more understanding more uh, and what that is is more expansion yeah w which you can go even deeper than that and I, and I know the group does as well right um okay let me just state this again everything is right there is no wrongs in the universe right which is a big statement for some people to hear and when they're ready that they'll be able to uh, they'll get that uh I've been thinking about that for the past couple of days, and it's actually been very um, healing, <laughs> to be honest with you, if you want the truth. Um, and just because someone, just because it's not right for me, uh, that's that other person's experience. It's what's you know what they wanted to explore. So let's let's just put this out, you know, on a harsh level in a sense. You know, look how many people are locked up for crimes that they've committed, and for you know some of them really brutal crimes towards others, right? And they came here, I'm guessing this is what it's saying, they came here uh, on some sort of soul contract, maybe, and that's just my words for it, right? But at some deeper level that we don't understand, they came here to choose to do that with free will. They came in to have an experience that's not possible in the non-physical. They always came for an experience of self-discovery. For most people, they spend lifetimes discovering the inauthentic version of them. So they're living in fear, they're making choices based on that fear, right. and they're acting on urges to try and control that fear. That could come in anywhere from you know punching the wall to honking your horn at someone to being impolite to being in a rush to the extremes. Yeah. But no one can meet up unless they're a vibrational match. It's not possible. So the persecutor meets the victim yep vibrational match just has to be they each have an experience that experience is expansive we think it's wrong and so we you know we try and help the victim and we try and you know put away the persecutor and this is the system that we have but that whole system is based in duality in neutrality there is really no right or wrong. In fact, there's no preferences or desires or any of this stuff. Now, neutrality is an unattainable state for us, but that's the state of the non-physical. This duality state allows us to create all kinds of things because we're always birthing desires. We're always trying to have solutions. We're always trying to get better. We're always trying to evolve. And so this is a very creative place to be. But when you're creating out of fear, you're creating things that will never satisfy you. When you're efforting and struggling to get things you think you are missing or lacking, if you get them, it's never going to be satisfying. When you come to this understanding that all you're here to do is to express love, 
to experience true freedom abundance and to expand your awareness of who you are. When you take life so much less seriously because nothing else matters than that, all you're doing is seeing everything from this higher perspective. And in that, the reflection that comes back matches that for you. Now, it doesn't mean that the world's changing. It is changing, but it doesn't mean that there won't be people who are still experiencing fear. That's for them. And so we can live harmoniously you know, in this idea of us being creators without having to change everything because changing is all based in this limited perspective that things are wrong or bad. But there are collective uh, events that affect us all in a sense, right? Definitely. Um, which are, I guess, destiny points in uh, a person's, you know, uh, life well, for, for, for all of us. And, you know, mixing that with, with what you're saying as well, um, that, that, that is difficult to, um, to accept sometimes, you know, that on a, on a mass scale, when mass things happen, that, you know, we all chose and there are no wrongs. Well, let's take a couple examples. One is school shootings. Right. You, we're all going to say that's wrong and think it's a tragedy and wish it never happened. But if you saw it from the non-physical perspective, you know, life is just here for a snap of a finger. And in those situations, it's the school shootings are a symptom of an institution that's just not working. It's just not designed for us now. It's 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 really taking the uniqueness out of kids and replacing it with conformity. The whole system is designed that way, and so we're having these pimples pop up of school shootings, or and it's and those who come in to participate in that are coming for that experience of being the teacher standing in the way or being the shooter or whatever it is. But it's, it's waking up the masses to some underlying issue, whether, you know, they may look towards gun control or whatever it is, but essentially people are going to realize that the school system is just not conducive to fostering uniqueness. And we are all unique. We are not conformist at all. Yes. Then you look at COVID. COVID came for the whole world at the same time. It, generally speaking, for most people, if they look at it, it allowed them time to think about their lives and to reset and to have an idea of what's more important for them. And then it changed, you know, it changed going to work and commuting and all these things. You know, it's so many things that it changed. But <laughs> from my perspective, perspective all the people that i know actually had more positive experiences from it than negative ones and i suppose you know for any victim's family for example um that's on the periphery of of you know, something that's happened it would be uh, how how freeing it would be for them to come from that perspective that they are no longer a victim of fate in a sense that this universe is a loving universe and that you know there are no mistakes just experiences but that you know you, we're not here to convert no one but to come from that space just how how, how would what, what would that do for them in a sense yeah just that shift in perspective to realize that this is all designed for us as this playground to explore who we truly are and the more we explore that, the more amazing experiences happen. The less we explore it, the more limiting beliefs get built up and there's a momentum of separation. The separation part is the illusion. But this illusion is purposeful. We get to play around with this idea that we're separate from each other when in fact we're all one. And so if you, just that perspective, okay, we're separated, these people don't matter, these people are strangers. Got to protect myself from bad people. That's a limited perspective. The perspective we're all one, even though we can't feel it, but just having that perspective, then we realize that homeless guy is doing that for me, is having that experience for me. Yeah. And I'm having this experience for anyone who wants to come to this level and access these ideas. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, my father has um, prostate cancer. And um, he's in that process right now of the treatment and everything else. And it's, you know, obviously I'm not able to go back to the UK. I'm going through immigration. It's very difficult. Um, but, you know, I, I tend to see it differently right now that that's 
his journey and but it's all our journey and the gift he's given us all is is to sort of come back to each other and the the the, the extra love that we you know that we've got for each other right now and, and there's so there's so much I, I mean i want you to to talk about you know things like this but i'm i'm saying there's someone that's going through it that's you know and others that will go through something similar as well because obviously health is a big part of that as well well everything is a manifestation event which means that if you judge something is bad or wrong, it's simply because you have a limiting belief in that area. We all have this limiting belief about death. Well, watch some near-death experience videos. You'll start to ease up on that idea. When you see everyone is talking about the same thing, returning to non-physical. When we realize that in the non-physical, we cannot wait to get here and have this experience because we can't feel these feelings there. Then you start to think about life in a completely different way. When you realize that people who have lingering illnesses at old age, it's just their way of being able to say goodbye. They don't want to be hit by a bus and not, you know, and, and die in a tragedy. They want to be able to, to take time and say goodbye. My mother and father both did the same thing. Yeah. Um, if, if cancer is happening to someone who's, you know, 50, it's this built up resistance, which is a message from that loving cancer saying, it's time to look at what you're afraid of. Look at what your limiting beliefs are. Look at how you're living your life. Look at the illusion that you're in and start expressing that love that you intend to express. And expressing that love simply means being on this level where you see everyone else as perfect and you see yourself as perfect. You don't see the flaws. You have a choice. You can look at the perfection of the person or the flaws. What I've discovered recently is the propensity to look at flaws is a way to protect yourself in case something happens, in case the relationship ends or the person leaves or the person dies. You can say, well, they were a drinker anyway, or they, you know, they were a smoker or whatever it was, or they were mean to the, to the waiter. Whatever it is, it was this, you know, you're trying to protect yourself from the feeling of loss. Well, that it turns out that loss is the thing that everyone's afraid of. This is the number one fear, the number one limiting belief. Well, loss is not possible to a creator because creators are generating it all the time. Loss is only possible to one who perceives themselves as a victim. If you think about being married to someone for 40 years and right. they die, right? the grief is not that the person died. The grief is that you lost the, the imaginary 20 years that were going to happen, that you thought was going to happen after that. That relationship is now done, and what are you gonna do? You know, you can go on and do something with your life. What you're sad about is that person not being there tomorrow, that you counted on them to be there for you. So it's a different perspective. Abundance is not having a bunch of money in the bank that, so you can feel secure. It's having everything you need when you need it to do whatever you need to do. If you redefine these things, then you're looking at everything from this higher perspective and everything becomes simple and easy. And I guess for some of us, though, you know, even though um, what's being said right now is, it feels and sounds um, so true, but there's always that doubt, isn't there? Well, you know, did they carry on? You know, it, 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 is, is there nothing after we continue? Yet the teachings that I'm living by right now are making my life much better. And without them, um, maybe my life wouldn't be as, uh, as fulfilled as as loving and, and you know all the good things that come from these teachings so it's, it's that kind of enigma isn't it that you know what if none of it is true yet what they do present is such goodness in a sense yeah well even if they weren't true if your life was more enjoyable more in joy more love you felt better then that'd be worth it now you've how many how many channels have you talked to would you guess um over 130 of those 130, how many say that there is no life after death? Uh, right, exactly. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Well, and, and so many other different people, you know, as you mentioned, sure. near-death experiences and yeah. mediums and all, all sorts of people. Yeah, and my own, you know, experiences as well, which I do doubt sometimes. But I guess, you know, that's normal because we do have to get on with what's now as well. You know, being too much in where we're going or what the possibility is, even though it helps us to live a, a better version of ourselves, we don't want to get too lost in it, do we? Because we did come here for this experience. Yeah, and you can leave whenever you want to leave. I mean, it's, all death is suicide anyway. And the means of the death, the way you die, is always perfect. 
for you. It might, it might be judged as imperfect by others, but for you, it will always be perfect. There's never anything to worry about. This is the thing that after doing this for about eight years, the last year, I came to this epiphany that my entire life from birth to this moment was perfect. Right. Every single thing that happened, happened perfectly. Now, some of it I was in resistance to and thought that was wrong and bad, especially as a kid. But when I look back, I go, oh, yeah, that had to happen for this to happen. And if that didn't happen, that this would never have happened. And I would be here now. So if every part of my life was perfect and this present moment that we're having right now is perfect, why wouldn't every future moment be perfect as well? So if you, if you let go of just the regret and resentment from the past and the worry about the future, I mean, it's still going to be a future and there still was a past, but now you don't have to worry about it so much and you can just stay more present. You know, the cliche is that all your power is in the present. Well, when you are in the zone, that's when you're in the present. When you're connected, that's this conversation right now, we're fully in the present. Yes, and it can take people to such low depths to get to that point as well. And it's sad when, you know, people struggle so much with the past affecting them. Whatever it is that's happened, right? Well, as you say, the loss of a loved one or whatever it may be, right? Every experience is unique. Um, yeah, it, it really, um, I guess it comes down to sort of fear as well. And, and fear is a big part of the work w which you do, processing fear, fears based on limiting beliefs. We just mentioned there, negative emotions. Do you, if you want to talk about that. Well, yes. So Earth is a very dense reality. Earth, as far as we know, is the only reality where we feel separate. So, we, so there, this Earth was created for this unique experience that isn't in other dimensions. Now, the, it's a experience based in fear or separation. So separation and fear. And then in fear, you want to control. So fear and control are synonymous and love and acceptance are synonymous. So to love someone is to really accept them as they are. Right. Now, so we're going back and forth between sometimes in fear, sometimes in love, but overall we're generally in fear if we're in the perspective of the victim who perceives that outside conditions can make them feel something because this is a feeling reality. All we're doing is feeling something intensely. People listening to this, because they're drawn to this, are likely to be more emotionally sensitive. Yeah. And that emotional sensitivity is a superpower on a journey of self-discovery because it causes you to look for information like this that will answer your questions. So if you understand that you're in fear because of a limiting belief, and when that limiting belief is triggered, you'll feel a negative emotion. That negative emotion is indication that you're perceiving the illusion and the fear is a byproduct of that illusion. In reality, there is nothing to fear if you could see yourself as who you truly are and how this whole system works. But everyone has limiting beliefs and they get triggered from time to time. The idea then is to take that limiting belief and prove to yourself it's not true because no limiting belief is true. As you do that, you don't eradicate the limiting belief, but you soften it. And when you soften limiting beliefs, what this does is it allows you to be in alignment more often or to feel good more often. And, and in that feeling good place, you receive inspiration. Now, every time you receive inspiration, it's going to trigger a limiting belief every time because it's asking you to do something new. If you've done the processing on these limiting beliefs, that fear that pops up when you're inspired is going to be mild and it'll be easier to push past. The idea here is to get into the state of neutrality, receive inspiration, act on that inspiration by pushing past fear, and this will lead you step by step on this journey of self-discovery, and you'll experience abundance, freedom, and true satisfaction. Interesting. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And, um, well, I suppose there's the fear, as you say, of, um, in a sense, you said, you know, of losing something. But then, you know something new is going to come along as well in a sense <laughs> it does most times right when you win when you do release it um, that is a brilliant thing to say because you can't really get the new unless you release or lose the stuff that's no longer necessary yeah 
you know, I mean, this is extreme, but this does happen. And COVID uh, sort of, you know, pushed a lot of relationships that were wrong anyway into this perspective. But there are, you know, if you're in an abusive relationship, um, you, I mean, you have to say to yourself, you know, uh, OK, there's nothing that there is nothing wrong in the universe. Yet I don't need to keep experiencing this. I can make another choice to, you know, and, and to stop this. That's choosing a different perspective on yourself. <laughs> so, so. So have you personally ever been in an abusive relationship? Yes. Okay. So at the time, you perceived yourself to be certainly less than you are, but you perceived yourself from a limited perspective. Yeah. That created a reality where the feedback came back to show you how you were perceiving yourself. That's all that was happening. Once you shift that perspective and say, I'm better than this, or I don't deserve this, or I'm, I'm, you know, I'm worthy of more, then that goes away, break up or, or the person leaves or, leaves or whatever it is, because you're no longer a vibrational match to the abuse. You can't do it by changing the conditions. You can't do it by having the person arrested because, or even breaking up with them because you're going to end up in another relationship just like that if you have the same perspective. If you change that perspective on yourself by processing all these limiting beliefs, then you will be a vibrational match to a different feedback system. The feedback that matches the new perspective. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you. I mean, I think the hardest thing for me was, you know, I think living in that space of, you know, if only it had been different, this would have been wonderful. If only, if only, if, if none of this had, had taken place, or if if that person could just calm down and not come from these <coughs> perspectives or this this anger that they were, and 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 not see any other point of view except for their own issue but then again they're going through their own problems do you know what i mean and uh, no one we're not here to fix anyone in a sense i mean you know that we know where that leads when we try to control people right yeah so exactly. yeah 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 well if you you're always in that limited perspective you're saying if only i know i know this aspect of them was different this would have been perfect i know but what's really happening is it's a perfect it's perfect anyway it's perfect as it is because it's this vibrational match so you always have to think about who you think you are and who you're being and and who you are really wanting to be with, not who you're going to settle for, that sort of thing. Yeah, I, I think what, what I enjoyed the most in that it was just having the, the family there because she had a family. And um, I really understood just how much I did, in, I did enjoy that um, energy and that just that that right and uh i think that was really hard to walk away from for, for many 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 reasons but yes um i i do agree with what you're saying there and um i i, I get you because i've had time to obviously reflect upon that as well so thank you for that I, I appreciate that um just going back here because we're going to be back and forward here but obviously you know you you've um you're running a business now in a sense you I mean you've always you've always had your own businesses and when we look at uh, people nowadays, they're, they're going more into purpose, more into being self-employed in a sense as well. Um, I think I've, one thing I've learned is, is you, you're either, you're either you're sort of living to serve yourself as I was back in the past, or you're looking to serve others and that, that you're, you're, you're trying to do things for a bigger purpose. And there's such a, I, I know Joseph touch, touches upon this as well. Well, this is the thing, is in fear, we're in fear of something happening to us. So we're focused on ourselves. Everything is about us. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to get something out of our reality, out of the people in it, out of our jobs. We're, you go into a job, you're not like, I'm here to serve you. I'm here to have this transaction where I will give you as little effort as possible for as little money as possible. And so that we have all these transactional relationships. It's just basically that's how it is. Even in your romantic relationships, I'll love you if you love me first, that sort of thing. When you start to take that focus away from you and realize that your entire reality is you, it's this relationship, this contextual relationship to every single thing, your house, your car, your health, your friends, your work, all this stuff. And what can you give in that relationship to that aspect? I don't need anything because I'm a creator of this. I'm here to simply express love. Well, from a victim's point of view, you can't do that because you'll be taken advantage of. If, if you gave everything to your work from the perspective of the victor, victim, 
you you know that you're not going to get paid back for that. It's not going to be a balance. However, if you do it from the perspective of the creator, that business I'm doing or that job that I have or that friendship that I have, my whole intention is to build a deeper connection with that, a stronger connection. Now, it may not come back in the way you think it comes back, but it's going to come back in satisfaction and more deeper connection and more learning about yourself, more authenticity. Yeah. Because you talk about it just this. works. Yeah, absolutely, it does. And you talk about this as well in, in moving on from that, but kind of connected is inspiration versus motivation as well. Well, motivation is doing things, efforting and struggling to get you what you think. Well, you, you don't know what's best for you. You have no idea. But inspiration is coming from your inner self or your guides and supporters. And that's going to get you one thing further along your journey of self-discovery. Now, that may be a side effect. Great friendships, great relationships, more money, more freedom, more experiences, all these things. But if you are really holding on to something you think is an ideal, then that's going to distract you from this inspiration. Because the inspiration comes and it seems to conflict with this idea that I have to have a million dollars in the bank. Right, yes. I'm not going to spend that money because I need to keep that million dollars there or I need to get it there, right? But yeah, the inspiration is to go to Paris and take this person with you and have these experiences that will further you along your, your journey of self-discovery. So we try to realize that what we think we want isn't what we truly want. Now, we're still going to have desires and they're still going to be manifested, but we don't have to go out and do it. We can just focus on the inspiration and just trust that that inspiration is going to lead to everything we truly want. Right. In a sense, that comes down to flowing as well, flowing with life, flowing with what's what's around you right now and yeah, not working against it. And and, and on top of that, it's the idea of the treadmill of effort, as you've, you've said before, you know, versus the sort of the, the joy and blissfulness of, of, of something that you really enjoy doing. Um, yes. It, yeah. But that sounds crazy to someone working in the cubicle. <laughs> yes, <you right>. know? <laughs> I'm just going to quit my job and go and, you know, do this and that. Well, it's, you don't have to do it right away. It's, it's this process. And the process is seeing what your life is really about and what you're here to do and to give in that life and realizing it's not about getting for you because you're the, you're the generator of this whole reality. You need nothing. When you start to put that perspective in there, I need nothing. I am simply here to be, not, not to serve others in doing something I don't want to do. I'm, it's not like going to the food shelter, you know, the homeless shelter and making beds. It's serving by doing this, you know, having this conversation, which is the most fun thing I can do. Right. <laughs> yes. And, and it's whatever it is for you as well. As long as you're not knowingly going out there and hurting anybody. Um, and sometimes, you know, it can take you in directions that you obviously for yourself as well. Look, look at you as an example, uh, Greg, you know, you know, you, you would not have expected that the outcome would have been this. And um, and I think that's what I'm trying to say is that sometimes what, what you end up doing by going in that in that with that energy and that flow is it's completely different to what you ever thought you was going to do. And may, maybe in some respects, you think you can't do it. That's the key is, you know, imagine climbing a mountain and then taking that first step and you realize, okay, I'll do, do the steps and I get to the top of the mountain. Imagine you have no idea where you're going to go. But when you get there and look back, you can't imagine not doing it, what your life would be back if you didn't do it. Now, if, if I was going to take 10 years ago and take, that version of Gary yep. and say, look at this life you're living now. I would say, Oh, this is too weird. You know, <laughs> I, I don't have an office to go to. I'm to, on podcasts about channels. Oh my God, no way. But it, you go step by step by step and you get these experiences that change your mental construct that allow you to see more truly who you are. Then you step into that ease into that step by step over a course of time. And along the way, all these affirming experiences happen that you couldn't imagine happening. And then you look back and you go, oh, my God, that was the most incredible journey. Because it's only a journey anyway. It's not to get anywhere. It's still going somewhere forever. But, but the key to all this is to, to re, reframe or redefine what life is. Life is not about gathering stuff and having, you know, having the fun that you think is fun. It's about having these enriching experiences on a journey to discover exactly who you are. And then when you discover who you are, then 
express that in a form of service to others. Once that happens, then everything changes. It's unbelievable. Yeah, and then you sort of become an allower then, don't you, in a sense? Well, you have to start as an allower. That's the tricky yes, part. Right. You have to start at this point of acceptance where you say, okay, I've been looking at my life and noticing the flaws this whole time. What I have to realize is that this is the perfect reflection of the vibration of I'm offering. It's a reflection of a, of a perspective that I've been a victim my whole life. It's perfect starting point to change that. Now, how do I change that? I don't know. Let's wait for the inspiration. Oh, I'm listening to this podcast. This is sort of interesting. Okay, I'll watch the documentary or I'll, or I'll watch this podcast or I'll get the book or whatever it is. That's the first step. You don't have to do anything else. You get that and then what's the next inspiration? You don't ever have to think about anything other than what's the next inspiration. Yeah, and how you you saying the book, uh, the uh, I think it was in, in the Joshua Diet <laughs> diets <laughs> because there's a number of volumes on on just that. Uh, yeah, you, I think you talk about um, how you feel is the only thing that matters. Well, if you think about it, you're not doing anything else, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> you're either feeling good or feeling bad. So why are you feeling bad? Because you're looking at your life from a limited perspective and you're perceiving things are wrong. That all that wrong happens to be an illusion that you believe in. And that causes you to feel bad. It's all based on this perspective of you perceiving yourself as limited or, 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 or lacking or not free to do what you want to do. Um, the, the idea is that you, you get this, you feel bad, you think something's wrong, and you birth this desire or this ideal. And you say to yourself, if I get that ideal, I won't feel bad anymore. Then you get that ideal, which is what I did, and you still didn't feel good, still weren't satisfied. So you had to go more and more and more. It was, it was a carrot on the end of the stick. Now you say, okay, hold it. Everything, I'll accept everything as it is now. I'm not settling for it. I'm just gonna accept that this is, just happens to be the reflection of the, the perspective I've been offering about myself. So I'm gonna change that perspective. That's the only thing I'm gonna change. And I'm gonna do it by receiving inspiration. Okay, it'll be simple. Watch this video, listen to this podcast, Watch this TV show, whatever it is. Listen, meet this person out of the blue. Read this book that just pops in your hand. You know that sort of thing, and then have this have this realization that as you choose a higher perspective every day, things are going to slowly change. Now they're not going to change right away because you've got this momentum built up, and so that carries forth. But say in two weeks, three weeks, I've seen people radically change their lives in eight weeks, radically. Well, I've seen that on the um, on the documentary and, and other things as well. That because obviously, you, I think you you've started back now, have you, with live events, or are you doing events online? Or we do a live channeling twice a week online, and uh, we have uh, courses that people do, um, and we have retreats here at the house. So the house we we have this big house. There's a beautiful bed and breakfast across the street. There's other places to stay. We have a fantastic facility we built to do the seminars in. And so we generally do it twice a year, and then we'll go to Orlando and, and uh, rent a couple houses down there and do it as there as well, or go on a cruise or something. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Again, uh, do you offer one-to-one -one sessions uh, on the, through the website? Very rarely, maybe once or twice a month, and they're on the website there. Okay, yeah. so people can get them. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, Again, uh, your books have been coming up on the screen as well. I, I just want to focus into to one twenty. Well, they're all, they're also good, but the the twenty sixteen one, uh, health, wealth, and love. Um, I just want to touch on uh, what Joshua has to say about um, well, health and well being, and then we'll get into love and relationships just very briefly. Sure. Well, your body is this perfect system. It's a community of cells. Each cell is a life experiencing life. That it's all designed to function perfectly and receive well-being. Cells don't live more than four or five or six years, so the body is constantly changing. The body is never, ever static. It's always changing. Without any resistance, which means inner conflict or stress, the body will function perfectly. If you are aligned all the time, you won't really age. You'll live. You'll have fun. Everything will work perfectly. What happens is that we... We have ex emotions and experiences that we don't process. And we think something's bad happened to us. And then these things sort of 
get into the body and it's trapped in motion. And if you're not doing certain things like breath, breath work or yoga or things like that, it sort of stays there. Now, if you have an a ongoing persistent resistance or maybe even some physical or emotional trauma that you all that you still to this day every day think it's wrong or bad and wish it never happened that's showing you this really powerful limiting belief and it's preventing you from living the life that you intended to live the body is going to be the the final frontier of this trapped resistance or trauma because things are happening in your life that are trying to show you that this limiting belief is pervasive and you need to address it. Maybe arguments, maybe relationships, maybe you know, uh, financial problems, whatever it is. You're ignoring it and you're ignoring it. Once it gets to the body, you can't ignore it. So it gets in the body and usually it's a ache or a pain or something mild. If you ignore it, it gets a little bit worse, it gets a little bit worse. But if you, all you have to do is take out a piece of paper this, write down what you think the limiting belief is and find evidence to prove it's false. We have a quick seven day course. It has what we call the manifestation event form. This is the form. It's three pages. We process limiting beliefs. We do it every day. You can get that on the website. And if you use the code five O off, it's $79. So it'll be $29. Get that, do it for a week. And this will begin this process of looking at limiting beliefs and proving them false. That's all that the body is trying to show you is that you have this limiting belief. Once you've, I just had a really bad cold last that we were going to be on and I couldn't do it because I had this coughing. I'm, I'm at the end of it now. Yeah. It was showing me three things, three things that I was not processing that I had to get ready for. One of them was being right. This thing about being right, which I thought I had processed because I used to be that guy that would always argue and say, I'm right, you know, and um, and define my worthiness about how right I was and keep score. I thought I had given that up. Well, it's still there. And so I had to go back and process that. I cannot be right if I'm a, if I'm a student, you're right. I have to learn from you and from everyone else I talk to and to see the value in the conversation we're having, of course. So that came up. There was two, two other things in there. And so I wrote out these forms, wrote them out, wrote them out, wrote them out, processed them. And the, the, the difficult part of that, I mean, it was really not difficult. I was back on my feet the next day, but I had a little bit of cough and stuff. Yeah. But it's just amazing how that working on that cleared that up right away. Wow. Yeah, which just goes to show. Yeah, absolutely. And um, even me. I mean, I've done this for eight, nine years now. <laughs> like, yeah. How can I still have living beliefs? But we never get rid of them. They're always there because we're we're ascending to a different level. So different limiting, limiting beliefs come on at different stages. Yeah, I mean, you're, you, you know, you're obviously a student of the work, but obviously you are at, at your core a teacher and, uh, and, and spiritual leader. I would have thought that those, uh, you know, that's there in your, um, in your charts, I guess. So, uh, yeah, the, the, and there's, if there's anything more you want to add, to, well, I suppose there's lots you could add to the, uh, the, the, the health and well-being, but obviously we're just limited by time right now. That's the only problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We could have we could go on this for hours. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well I tell you what then, let's just move it then to very brief briefly love and relationships, because that's a big one for people, that is. All right. Well, it's the same thing. If you're trying to get something from your partner that you think you is lacking, they can't give it to you because all they can be is a reflection of that lacking. So if you want someone to make you feel worthy and you don't feel worthy, they can't make you feel worthy. It's not possible. They can only make, be a reflection of exactly how you're feeling. You start to change your perspective and feel worthy yourself. Two possibilities. One, they go away and someone new comes or they actually change, which is, which is the, the most likely thing. It's the highest probability. In doing this work for nine years, I used to think that Joshua's going to cause tons of divorces, you know, because people are going to raise their vibration and they're going to be like, you can't keep up. But what's happening is that their spouses are keeping up yes. most of the time. And, you know, and, and they are having a different in relationship where I'm here to support you. I don't need anything from you. You can't give me anything. I just want to be here in support of you and love you and express my love and all that. There's a whole different mentality mm. from transactional to deeper connections. 
Interesting. All I want to do is connect to you more. Yes, because I'm guessing, and I, I know I'm kind of getting personal here, but I'm guessing that you went through your own change as well, that when you started this work, you, obviously you're not the same person. And, and I guess that there was relationship change with yourself as well in that process. Yeah, so me and Lily, we were getting into this work together. Um, we found our both our passions. We, we ended up building a beautiful house together. We got money back. It was great. Um, I began channeling. She loved it. She was my number one fan. And we had a bunch of friends together that, that were really into it. But then I was having to go away. I was people were coming to the house to meet me. Um, lots of people were, were showing up and she wasn't comfortable sharing me. So we spent some time, we spent about a year thinking about this. Um, and it, what we realized is that we can still be best friends and we are best friends and we are in our lives as much as ever. She has a wonderful new boyfriend. Everything is really, really good down there. Very supportive. We had the most amicable divorce, easy divorce you've ever seen in your life. It was incredible. That's how it should be. Yeah. Because the most important thing is this relationship. It just wasn't going to evolve to where I am and what's where, where I'm being taken. I, I would have loved that with my ex, just to have that, you know, the sorries and, and the forgiveness on each part. and risk. But when you get told that 100% everything was your fault and always will be, you know that that, that person's just not ready to, you know. Right. Yeah. Join at that, you know, to, to, to form a friendship. And it's a shame. Um, yeah. And I think that's what hurt them. That, that's, that's what hurt, hurts the most. Because when you're so close with someone, um, and, and that's not taking any, any responsibility or blame away from me, I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, uh, yeah, I, uh, that, you, that's nice. And that's how it should be. That's what we hope for. And that's, it, it happens when people are really realizing that. We came together in love. We had this amazing relationship. We had so much fun together. Yeah. But but now that relationship is taking a detour. But it doesn't mean we can't still love each other and be in our lives and be friends, that sort of thing, and support each other. And that's what we chose to do. Absolutely. And thank you for being so honest there and sharing that as well. That will help a lot of people. So thank you. Um, if there's any anything else you might want to add to this before we do a little bit of challenge, because I know that um, you know, we're an hour in right now, and I'd like just to speak to the group if that's possible. Absolutely. We'll get Joshua in here. Okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do is um, just quiet my mind, focus. I imagine them, imagine Source coming through, your guides and supporters, and the guides and supporters of everyone who will listen to this, all coming in as a big group. I'll breathe. Then I'll set my intentions and they'll come through and they'll say, we're thrilled to be here. And they'll make, they might go on for a little bit and, and talk about you. Um, we'll see what they say. So I have no idea what they're going to say. So we'll <laughs> just go from here. Thank you. We're thrilled to be here. Well, we have to say that it is very clear to us that you are embarking upon something that is going to radically enhance the perspectives of everyone who comes in contact with what you're doing. Now, the interesting thing about this is that you're doing this for you. You're doing this to change your own perspective, to change your own vibration. And all the interesting thing about this for you, well, that's being sent to you from your inner self. You're being guided every step along the way. You're not making any of these decisions. You're not making any of these choices. You're being guided every step of the way. You want to control it. You want to make it perfect. You want to make it professional. You want to do all these things. You can let that go because all you're doing is changing the perspectives of yourself and those who will listen to you. This is the greatest thing you can do because when you change someone's perspective, when you just show them a different perspective, that, that there could be a different way to approach life, well, you give them everything. You give them the first step in becoming who they authentically are. This idea of becoming authentic is what awakening is all about. 
is going from the conformity of your society that wants to put everyone in a box to saying, no, everyone is unique and you're unique. Your talents, your attributes, your passions, your interests, your curiosity, all of that is absolutely unique. And you designed it all in the non-physical, knowing that you would come here and have an impact. You didn't have an idea of what that impact would be, and you might not even see the impact, but it's a ripple effect caused by everyone who watches your show, everyone who's con comes in contact with you personally. They leave with a different perspective, and that different perspective is then given to others and given to others and given just a slight different perspective. Oh, you mean possibly there is no wrong anywhere in the universe, that every single thing is right, that everything's perfect, that you're perfect, that you've always been perfect, that you have may have seen yourself from a limited perspective, but that didn't take away from your perfection. You were born as a baby perfect. You were perfect the next day, and the next day, where did you get imperfect? You never did. You just were given these set of beliefs that said you can't be perfect, no one's perfect, and that you need to be this, that, and the other thing to get love from us. You just got that. Everyone got that. And this caused you to have these beliefs, and these beliefs caused you to birth desires, and this birth desires led you on this trajectory to finally discover what? There is no wrong anywhere in the universe, that you are perfect. Once you see yourself from this perspective, then all of your innate abilities and talents and powers and all the skills that you came with that you don't even realize you have right now, all of those things will come online. It'll get easier. You'll care less about money. You'll care less about fame. You'll care less about all these accolades from outside. And you'll focus on the thing that is true to your nature, your inquisitive nature. You want to discover it. This time it's channels, and next time it's psychics, and the next time it's this and that. You're bringing this information that maybe a lot of people think is weird, and you're saying, hold on, I, for one, do not think it's weird. Look at all these people. Look at all the ideas. Look at all the information. Look at all the ways that we can change our lives. Look at the stuff that we took for granted is true, and maybe that's not true anymore, all the stuff that we think is bad and wrong. What if that was the illusion? And What if the truth was everything's perfect? Well, no one's going to get there yet. But that doesn't matter because just that idea, just that idea in the multiverse, just that idea being here, airing it on the internet, on YouTube, on podcasts, everywhere you put it, talking about it with friends, just that idea, everything is right. That's enough to shift the perspective of the planet. And you are responsible for that. So we want to congratulate you and want you to think about how empowering it is for you to do what you do and you are literally changing the world and with that we would like to talk to you about anything you'd like to talk about <laughs> where you'd like to start well thank you very much that's a very kind message and uh, and, and uh, honestly your teachings have, uh, even in the past few days uh, have helped me just to see what some other channels have been saying but just in a different way but the way that you said it was just uh I don't know. It it, it just clicked, I, and I, and I guess you know we all have our favourites, or we all have someone that we resonate with more than others. Um, there's a teacher for everyone, I guess, right? <laughs> so I thank you. There's for what a you're teacher doing. for every level. Yeah. There's a teacher for every perspective. There's a, but there, we're all doing the same thing. We're all holding you by the hand and showing you that there's another way to look at things. And if you look at things from this higher perspective, you'll see the truth in it. It will become obvious to you. It'll become something that is stirring in the back of your mind. Why? Because your inner self led you to this conversation. And those who are listening were also led to this conversation. Now, this conversation is different than others. It's at a different vibrational level. But everyone will get something out of it. Everyone will understand parts of it. Everyone will be who's listening now will have interest. And there might be a few who reject it, but even those will have a vibrational shift just by hearing the sound of Gary's voice right now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I agree with that. And, um, you know, I I had a uh, regression session back in, um, I think it was 2016 in Amsterdam, and uh, the regression has passed on now. And the idea that was given to me by my higher self, I got, I got to see a future aspect, and um, I, I, I fought it all the way to the bank. But you want to know, since I immigrated to America, I'm going through that process still, you know, um, I'm actually doing what, was given to me in that vision which was the international spiritual news network and 
I, I get some of the teachings of what Gary's put into these, what, what you guys have you know, put into these books as well. You know, that, you know, sometimes when you go beyond that, which you think is possible and have some trust there as well and flow, um, I, I can't always say what I'm doing right now, I'll be doing in the future, but I, 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 I'm, I'm trusting, what, I, I suppose what I'm trying to say is I'm trusting what was given to me by my higher self, by myself in that vision I had. And uh, I've never done that before. Do you know that? And it's a weird process, I'm, I'm you know, being honest, of letting go. <laughs> what you're doing is letting go of your perception of yourself in the past, of who you thought you had to be, to be liked, loved, and respected, to be successful. You're letting go of this persona that you developed, this persona that everyone develops, that, that you bring out and show people and say, isn't that shiny, isn't that nice, and you can be proud of this persona. And it's inauthentic. What you're doing is becoming you are becoming who you truly are. You're in the process of that. You're doing everything you need to do. This is exactly what you intended to do because you are a very powerful spiritual leader and teacher yourself. You are a intrepid explorer. You are an advanced, old, wise soul coming to shake things up. This, is, this might be beyond your current belief system, you might not have this perspective of yourself yet, but we're not here by accident. You didn't phone us up by mistake. You didn't get a wrong number. We came to tell you who you truly are. Who you truly are is more magnificent than you could possibly imagine. And you are in fear of that, but that is what you're becoming. So every step of the way, every inspiration that you get is in service to that becoming this authentic version of you. I understand that in my past relationship, I couldn't be doing, I needed this gap right now, these 600 and something days since it, that, that all ended to have pushed this forward. What I'm doing right now is it's taken complete dedication to get to this point. And I, I'm only saying this to share it with others who are maybe going through something similar, right? Um, that it will help them as well. Um, and th th as in, there are no mistakes, right? That's what I'm trying to say. And, you know, the idea of, you know, even producing the news and not too distant future from a spiritual perspective with, with connections like yourself to come on board to, to, to look at the deeper karmic reasons. And when I see the way of the world right now and how scared people are and, and, and the fear that's out there right now, I, I just feel so pulled to want to do the spiritual news. And um, I can't say I, have, I ever planned it really, but, you know, no one else is doing it. So um, I'm going to do it. So you had to have this time, the break from mo a more structured system. Yeah. Because you had to have absolute freedom and control. You had to be able to be free to dive into what you were doing. In that, you reached a state of acceptance. You may have mentally constructed it saying, well, I'll do this for a certain period of time, or this is interesting to me, or I have nothing else to do, or this is what I can do as I move to the States. This will be the way that I can pay for things, whatever it is. But as you got into it, your mental construct has been changed through all the experiences and interviews you, taught, you had. This has allowed this inspiration to come through. This inspiration is fully aligned with the truth of who you are. This idea, this new venture is not to change other people's opinions or to do all the things you think it might do or to help anyone. Sure. It's to simply allow you to go on, an, on another journey to discover who you are, to process, to discover limiting beliefs, to process limiting beliefs, to come in, to meet people you would never meet before, to have, build alliances that would not be buildable otherwise, to, to find for yourself possibilities of seeing things that you and everyone else thinks is wrong, and then you coming in with the idea, not needing us, you come in with the idea of how it possibly could be right, possibly could be a benefit, possibly is necessary. Well, imagine looking at the news, covering the news as is, and then looking at it from that perspective. <laughs> no one's doing that, right? And that's I'm Well, if you look at the news, they're taking the top one millionth of 1% of what's actually happening on planet Earth that will elicit the most that will trigger the most limiting beliefs. And fear. Because if, if they can trigger limiting beliefs, if they can pe get an emotional response from people, people will have an emotional connection to that source of media. This is just a game they're playing. From your perspective, you would say, okay, 
This is an interesting topic. You could say the Oscar slap. Right. And you could look at the Oscar slap and say, okay, well, there was a dynamic going on there. There was culture. There was protecting your mate. There was all these things in fear. There was the Chris Rock character who was able to stay gracefully in the moment. There was this superstar who seemed to lose control. And you could say, oh, this was all orchestrated for the non-physical to point out all these facets of, of society that just don't matter anymore, that don't work anymore. There's no need for the man to protect the woman. There's no need to use physical violence against a friend of yours in public to show your, your manhood. There's no need for any of this. And when someone acts on an urge, this is what happens. When someone is able to stay gracefully in the moment without reacting, this is what happens. Thank you for that. I really appreciate that. And just for the wider audience as well, I really, you know, I, I do appreciate that. Um, with the times that we live in right now, and I've said this before in other, in other shows as well, um, what, does, uh, what does you as a group feel about the times that we live in right now and where, you know, where we are heading and what is your general energy in the sense? Literally, the most exciting place to be in the universe. The most expansive experience is happening right now. The most technology, the most communication, the most connection, the most abundance, the most freedom of any civilization or any society that ever existed previous to this. You want to go back to 1922? Go back to that. Go back to racism. Go back to, to truly toxic masculinity. Go back to poverty. Go back to inequality. Go back to all the things that that you think are bad now. Go back 100 years. It's so much better now. It's so much more interesting now. It's so many possibilities. Now, the, there's an expansion of possibilities. So you could be poor now, but compared to someone poor in 1920, you're rich. But compared to the person living across the street, you can feel the difference in that. This is a different sensation or a different emotion that was not possible before. Now imagine that everything expands and you can investigate the fear side of that or you can investigate the love side of that. It's your choice, but it's all based on how you perceive yourself. If you perceive yourself as one who can live in this wonderful world abundantly and free and deal with the fears and deal with the things that come up, but understand that everyone is having their experience, that perspective will allow you to, to live this incredible life that beyond your wildest dreams. If you can get rid of the things you think you want, the things society says is good or bad, and just live in your truth, bringing that truth from within and not needing guidance from anyone else, not listening to pundits or experts or scientists or any of these things, but listening to what's true for you and then giving faith to that. If you can think about feeling good yourself, how do I feel good? Okay, I want to sleep well. I want to eat well. I want to exercise. I want to have great conversations with friends. I want to do work that I enjoy. I want to be in nature. I want to love my pet. I don't want to listen to the news. I don't want to argue with people. I don't want to fight or complain or think things are wrong or bad. I want to reframe this entire reality where it's all about how I feel. If you can get to that spot, You'll have to say first, I accept where I am, because acceptance is the key to all of this. If you can't accept where you are, you're still going to be looking at the flaws. What if there were no flaws? What if it was just a reflection of the vibration you've been offering as perfect as it is? What if it doesn't matter? Because as soon as you raise your perspective, though these conditions are going to change. Now, they may not physically change, but you're not going to care about them anymore. That thing you thought was wrong or bad, that's not going to bother you a bit. That's even going to be in your awareness because you've changed your perspective of yourself. So change that perspective by accepting what is now as perfect. And guess what? You move along this journey of self-discovery and that's what you want. The whole enchilada is based in that journey of self-discovery. And thank you so much. That's so powerful what you just said there. And do, and do you think the times that we live in right now as well are pushing us to go more into purpose? For those who are ready. Right. Yeah. Those who are listening to this now are moving more into purpose, more into self-discovery, more into connect deeper connections with everything and everyone in their reality, 
more into the truth and not the illusion, more into love rather than fear. Everyone on earth is moving from fear to love, but before you can jump into love, you want to have experiences in fear. You want to play around with that illusion. You want to have the emotions and feelings that you can't have in the non-physical. But once you've done that enough, well, the love side looks interesting, but the love side is also, there's a lot of fear there because to get to that love side, you're going to have to pass through all those limiting beliefs you have. You're going to have, Gary has to come on to a podcast as a channel where formerly that was the weirdest thing he could imagine. He has to be weird to do what he does. Well, he didn't want to be weird. He wanted to be normal. He wanted to conform. He wanted to have people like him. Now he has to risk people not liking him to do this. But he realizes that he was born to do this. This is all he wants to do. This is all the interesting. Now, he couldn't jump from 10 years ago to now. He had to go step by step by step. But every day, he had to push past the fear. Enter that, press that thing, and it's going to go to Facebook. It's going to be in the public. Press that button, it's going to be on YouTube. Press that email that's signed Love Gary to some person he's never met before. He's going to express his love by being weird. Well, it's not weird to those of you who are interested in channels, but it's weird to what he considered his friends. Turns out, they all think it's great. Turns out, no one thought it was weird. Turns out, you wrote five books? That's amazing. <laughs> yes. Turns out, everything you fear is an illusion. Now, it looks like it's a real thing. It looks like it's an obstacle. But once you pass that fear, everything you truly want is on the other side. Absolutely. Thank you. I want to say, and that's, I want to say that's so true. It just, I just know that that's, that's, uh, yeah, that's so true. I'm, I've been experiencing that. Yeah. How much do you think, uh, imagination plays a role in all this as well to imagine yourself out of the situation you're in as well into that bigger, expansive part that you want to, you know, play or be come. You cannot imagine the spectacular things awaiting you. So don't even try because the imagination is always coming from a limited perspective. That limited perspective is going to shift and change as you go through experiences. The imagination tends to be an ideal that you cling to and it's a distraction because you think once I get that ideal, I'll finally feel good. Let that go. Just feel good now and let the inspiration take you where it takes you. You cannot imagine it. Now you can imagine a homeless person having an experience of freedom, that's wonderful. You can imagine a sick person getting well, that's wonderful. But if you're, if you're holding on to an ideal that you think is going to get you what you're lacking, get you a feeling that you don't feel now, that's simply the vibration of that lack. Right. Okay. Thank you. We're almost going to wrap up here because we're out of time almost, but, um, Time, by the way, is an illusion. Uh, yes, we, it is. we can go on forever. <laughs> yes, it is. That that is true. Um, your connection with Gary, I find this really interesting. About you know what this energy is that that's working with Gary right now, and why Gary and well, not why Gary, I suppose, because you know why not? But I mean, th there, I just feel there's a deeper connection there somewhere. Gary had very intense pre-birth intentions, very powerful, strong pre-birth intentions. He. If he was going to come, he was going to come to shake it up. Right. He was going to come to make a shift in the awareness of humanity. We came along because we provided a structure and a name and an ideology that he could, at the time, hold on to. It might shift in the future. It might be different. But for now, it's exactly what he wants, and it's all for him. Now, if it, as a side effect, is great for other people, wonderful. But he is the one bringing in what he wants. And because he is a curious, leading edge, willing to go there kind of thinker, and he wants practical information for how to improve one's experience of physical reality, we came as a massive group combined with all similar interests at a similar vibration to help bring in the message that he was looking for. And, and does this group work with others as well? In... The channel is unique. Right. And the group or entity 
is unique to that channel. Now they may switch teams and trade places and gather whatever's interesting in the time, but it's a collective energy. The information flows from that collective in energy as one stream of thought that Gary can pick up on or that any other channel could pick up on. You could do the same thing. You don't have to think about wh who they are or what their name is. Sure. It could be your inner self. It could be your guidance supporters. You just say, I'm going to let the inspiration flow in this moment and just start writing about this subject. Right. Now, you might have a little resistance in the first couple of paragraphs, but if you just let it flow, let it come, let it go, you will notice that the writing will take a tone to it that is unique from your typical writing. And it will help bring in perspectives that you may have not have thought about before. And upon consideration of those perspectives, you might see the truth in that. Have you ever experienced any incarnation as a, in, in that sort of energy at all? We explain who we are to Gary. Imagine that you're in a boardroom and there's one person, Gary, writing down all the information and the rest of the people there are, are writing this book. Well, now imagine a theater filled with people. Now imagine an arena. Now imagine a stadium. Now imagine every stadium in the world filled to capacity. That's what we are. And so some of us have incarnated, some of us haven't incarnated. It doesn't matter. Some of us are different from different dimensions. It doesn't matter. We yeah. all have the same vibration yeah. of interest in practical application of the laws of the universe within this physical reality. And in this time now as well. Well, this is the time where there has been those who have been able to raise their perspective enough to allow this to come in. Now, if you could imagine 200 years ago, you might be afraid of this. You might be in great fear of it. You might be afraid of persecution. But there were channelers all along. There wasn't a massive way to distribute this information that, like there is now. And so from your perspective, it seems like there's all these channelers out there. Well, they always were, but they were in their little basements doing their own thing without the ability or wherewithal to spread their message. Final uh, question. What would be an important message for yourselves right now to leave with those that are watching and listening to this? Well, our message for all of you who are listening to this is that there's something in you, a vibration in you that is seeking to know yourself. That vibration is drawing you to, towards authenticity. That vibration is a match to the vibration of this conversation. The only possible reason you could ever listen now is because you have that vibration within you. That vibration is taking you on a journey through limiting beliefs, through fear, through experiences to higher and higher perspectives, higher understandings of yourself. You are not the victim, meaning outside conditions cannot make you feel anything. You're only feeling something because a limiting belief has been triggered or an empowering belief. If you feel joy, it's because an empowering belief has been triggered. If you feel angry, it's because a limiting belief has been triggered. The outside conditions had nothing to do with it. It was your perspective of yourself. If you had the perspective of yourself as your inner self living in physical reality, you would feel no negative emotion ever. You would never see anything as anything other than perfect. Well, that's not the reason to be here. The reason is to go on this journey from imperfection to perfection, from fear to love, from confusion to clarity, from not knowing yourself to knowing yourself. That's why you're here, to sifting and sorting and having fun and playing with your friends and playing with your loved ones and, and being light and easy and enjoy and seeing the brilliance of this platform of self-discovery. This earth is perfect. This earth is more powerful than you can imagine. No one's doing anything to the earth. They're just moving sand around. The tide's gonna come in, Everything, the tide will go out and the beach will be smooth again. Doesn't matter. You're here for a finite fraction of an instant. So make the best of it. Have the most fun. See yourself as capable and worthy and good and perfect in every way and just enjoy this life. Because guess what? You're probably going to come back and do it again.
and again and again and again, and you're never going to get it done. So you might as well have fun. And with that, we are complete. Thank you so much. It's pretty fun, huh? That was pretty fun. That was a yeah. That was great. I I just you know. Thank you so much for coming on uh, and, um, and sharing everything that you have as well. And uh, there's so m much to this work. Mm -hmm. And your website is? TheTeachingsOfJoshua.com, where you can just Google me, Gary Temple Bodley. And uh, that's it. You'll find everything there in those places. Yeah, our, uh, the, uh, web, the um, podcast is Joshua Live. So you'll get anywhere you get podcasts. Well, we'll be linking everything, uh, as we said earlier on, below. So just go to the show more and um, you'll see everything there that we've talked about and much more. Gary, just thank you for this extra time right now. You've gone over time uh, by nearly uh, uh, half an hour. So, so thank you for everything you've shared and for the work that you're putting out there in this world. It's so important what you're doing. And I know you've helped so many people and will continue to do so. So just thank you for what you do, brother. Well, Kevin, you're doing the exact same thing as me. You you can be thanked as much as I can. What you're doing is absolutely amazing. What you're going to continue to do, I can see it. It's so obvious. Joshua saw it right away. You are a force in this whole thing of shifting pr perspectives and and changing. And you can you can't possibly see the ripple effect of what you're doing. So so kudos to you. That. I appreciate that. I, 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 Thank you. So until next time, uh, we, we will definitely get you back on. So appreciate that. Awesome.